Today I want to show you guys an interesting method for calculating this limit. So maybe the limit itself is not super interesting, but I really like the strategy for calculation that is used here. So we've got this limit, it's n goes to infinity of 1 to the a plus 1 plus 2 to the a plus 1 all the way up to n to the a plus 1 over n times 1 to the a plus 2 to the a all the way up to n to the a. And maybe I'll let you guys try to think about what values of A are allowable here. Um, I won't point that out at all because I think that's a nice thing for you guys to think about. And so what we want to recall here is the Riemann sum definition of an integral. And so I'm glossing over some details here, um, but this is the general idea. So the integral from capital A to capital B, so usually those are lowercase, but I've used lowercase a up here, of f of x dx is the limit as n goes to infinity. That's like the number of rectangles. And then the sum, k equals 1 to n of f of x sub k delta x. And here delta x is b minus a over n, so we're splitting these into equal length rectangles. And then xk is a plus k times delta x. Okay, so that's like a standard thing from the very end of a calculus one type class. Okay, so now we want to look at a special case of this, which is what we'll use for our problem. And that special case will be the integral from 0 to 1 of f of x dx. So notice in that case, uh, delta x is equal to 1 minus 0 over n. In other words, it's 1 over n. And then x sub k is going to be 0 plus k times delta x. So because 0 is the lower bound, but that's just k over n. So what that means is we can rewrite this as the limit as n goes to infinity of um, the sum k equals 1 to n of f of k over n times 1 over n. So this is like my x sub k, and that's like my delta x. Okay, so now I'm going to clean up the board, and maybe I'll put this special case of the limit of the Riemann sum over here so that we can save it, and we're going to use that to solve this uh, problem. Okay, so now that we've seen this special case of the Riemann sum definition of an integral, so let's just look at it again. The integral from 0 to 1 of f of x dx is the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum k equal 1 to n of f of k over n times 1 over n. So that means we want to turn the, this guy into something involving one or more of those. So now the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 1 over n to the a plus 2. Great. And so let's see what that gives me. That's going to give me the limit as n goes to infinity, and let's see what we have in the numerator. So I'm going to hold one of the n's out and distribute the rest in through all of the terms, and that's going to give me 1 to the a plus 1 over n to the a plus 1 plus 2 to the a plus 1 over n to the a plus 1 all the way up to n to the a plus 1 over n to the a plus 1. And then outside of that, I have 1 over n. So let's just reiterate what happened. I took 1 over n to the a plus 2. I split it up into 1 over n times 1 over n to the a plus 1. I distributed that 1 over n to the a plus 1 through all of these terms. Now I'm going to do something pretty similar here. But before I do that, I'm going to take this n and cancel this down to a 1. I'll hold 1 out and I'll distribute the rest through. So that's going to give me 1 to the a over n to the a plus 2 to the a over n to the a all the way up to n to the a over n to the a and then 1 over n. Okay, now the next thing that I want to do is rewrite this as a quotient of limits, and I can do that because the numerator and the denominator both individually converge, and we've got a theorem that says that we can do that in this case. Okay, so that's going to give me the limit as n goes to infinity of, and now I'll rewrite these in the following way. I have 1 over n to the a plus 1 plus 2 over n to the a plus 1 all the way up to n over n to the a plus 1, and that's all times 1 over n. And then in the denominator, I have something very, very similar. So this is the limit as n goes to infinity of um, 1 over n to the a all the way up to n over n to the a, and then this is all multiplied by 1 over n. 
Now the next thing I can do is slap these together into some sort of summation notation. That's going to give me in the numerator the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum k equals 1 to n of k over n to the a plus 1 times 1 over n. And then in the denominator, I have something pretty similar. So the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum k equals 1 to n of k over n to the a times 1 over n. But now notice, each of these play this uh, same game over here with this special case of the Riemann sum definition of the limit. In the numerator, the function is given by x to the a plus 1, so that's pretty easy to see. And then in the denominator, the function is given by x to the a, so that makes this numerator equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the a plus 1 dx. And then the denominator is the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the a dx. But we can calculate both of these pretty easily using the fundamental theorem of calculus. So that's going to give us 1 over a plus 2, x to the a plus 2 evaluated from 0 to 1. And then 1 over a plus 1, x to the a plus 1 evaluated from 0 to 1. And then it's pretty, pretty easy to see what you get when you plug these in. You're going to get a plus 1 over a plus 2 when everything is done. Okay, and like I said at the very beginning of the video, some values of a won't work here, but maybe post in the comments which values of a will work and which ones won't, and which ones you have to be more careful with in order to make work. Okay, so this is a good place to end.